What motivated you to develop a career in BME and then how did you pick the current concentration you are in right now? My decision to do a career in BME was very much focused on solving medical problems. Biomedical engineering is really about taking knowledge from different disciplines, be it chemistry, biology, and engineering, and using that to solve real problems in society. And so for me, biomedical engineering was incredibly exciting because we could think about ways to better treat patients and come up with new types of diagnostics or therapies. So how did you pick the current concentration? Oh, I don't know. Uh, very much through discussing with experts in the field about which types of problems were in most need of a benefit. So talking with clinicians, mm -hmm. understanding what the clinical needs are and where improvements could be. That's where many of the projects in the lab came from, is from those discussions and really understanding what the doctor wants to do and what the patient needs. Mm -hmm. So what triggers your interest for biomaterial in the first place? I think it originated from the fact that we can, using material science and chemistry and engineering, make materials that might replicate some of the properties that we see in biology. Mm. And so this idea to mimic biology and make unique materials was quite fascinating. Okay. And so that made me think about, you know, can we make these biomaterials that then would have function or performance in an in vivo application? I see. I see. Okay. So uh, why did you choose work in academia instead of the industry? So when did you make that decision? And then what made you make that decision? So when I graduated from undergrad, I really didn't know what I wanted to do, but I really liked doing research. So I decided to go to graduate school. And at the end of graduate school, I still really loved research and wasn't quite sure if I wanted to work in industry or academia. So I decided to do a postdoctoral position. And it was during my postdoc that I really kind of fell in love with the idea of doing research and being a professor. And for me, it was the idea that you could work on almost any problem that you wanted to. Um, and that meant you had freedom in thinking about the problems of interest, mm -hmm. be it um, a clinical problem or be it a sustainable energy problem. Mm -hmm. Both of those would be available to work on. Um, and to me, that freedom and the ability to kind of think about multiple areas of science and engineering was, was very exciting. I see, I see, okay. Uh, and uh, what were the challenges you encountered in different stages of your academic journey as a grad student, postdoc, faculty, and how did you overcome them? So as an, as an undergrad, um, I think my biggest challenge was okay. studying and taking tests. Um, <laughs> I actually liked working in the lab much more than I liked preparing for tests, so I had to work on that quite a bit. Um, and then in graduate school, it's all about how do you learn to solve a problem? How do you design an experiment? How do you think about a hypothesis? And so mm -hmm. the same things that my students are doing now are the same things that I did during graduate school that you need to do. And then learn to write. Um, as an undergrad, I wasn't an English major. And so all of a sudden being in graduate school and writing a lot mm -hmm. and knowing that if I'm going to become a professor today, I'm going to have to write even more. Yes. Uh, learning to write and being able to communicate was, was really critical. Like what challenges did you encounter as a faculty and how did you overcome them? I think one of the biggest challenges um, becoming a new faculty member is, is kind of threefold. You know, you need to teach, you need mm -hmm. to do research, and you need to work on committees, and yeah. you need to do all of that. And yeah. it's a big learning curve because mm -hmm. you want to do a good job teaching. You know, mm -hmm. I love teaching and I want to make sure I can do the best job I can. Similarly, I really enjoy research. I like thinking about hypotheses. I like experimental design. And that takes time. And then you got to come up and find people willing to give you money. So you got to write proposals. So I think the biggest challenge is really time management uh -huh. and becoming more and more efficient with your time uh -huh. um, so that you can get everything done. So first couple of years as an assistant professor, it's a lot of time management and a lot about becoming very efficient at what you do. So coming out of a postdoc position, what were your goals and how did you achieve them? So the goal is very straightforward out of a postdoc, get a job. <laughs> Okay, very good thing to do. Um, and so 
First, you need to figure out, determine, you know, do you want an academic job or an industrial job? And if it's an academic job, then it's about uh, what type of department do you want to work in? Mm -hmm. What type of area of research do you want to do? And then developing proposal ideas that you can present to the school when you go to visit for an interview. Mm -hmm. And how does one put that package together so that you look, you know, attractive and exciting to the faculty there and to the university as a whole? I see. It's interesting you mentioned the whole package. Like, what do you mean? Meaning being able to talk about research and what you'd want to do, talk a little bit about the courses that you might like to teach, oh, right? And about how you might manage your group and where you might raise money from and what types of the first proposals you would do. It's kind of all of that comes all together rounded. to be able to put together a package for you to be successful to obtain a job. Gotcha. Okay. That's really challenges. It's like you're super good at multitasking and you know, not always very good at with research, teaching, and also like a lot of people skills, soft skills as well. Mm. Wow. Okay. What does your day look like as a BME faculty? I'm on a daily basis. You know, I get up in the morning like everybody else, and then I, <laughs> I do a little bit of writing in the morning. It's quiet and I have a time to think. So I do that for a couple hours and then I'll do breakfast and then I'll come to school and meet with students, uh, teach, a uh, couple faculty meetings or something like that I have to do. And then hopefully at the end of the day is meeting with students and talking about, you know, what's working in the lab and what's not. Um, and then I usually go home and I like music. So I usually listen to music for about an hour and then I go to bed. So not, not too exciting. <laughs> I would say it's a very productive day. Just curious because you mentioned about like the content going to different journals. I wonder like different levels of journals, like uh, like science, nature, like the top notch versus just not so impactful journals. Like what's the difference? Like what kind of research or what kind of data you have to generate in order to publish in like very well established journals? I think where you publish is really important, but I think it's also the fact that you do publish. Okay. There are many examples of technologies, Nobel Prizes that came from journals that were not science or nature. I see. Um, but that said, you'd like to do the science and the engineering that gives you the best visibility. Mm -hmm. So if you work on something, you want people to read it. And so yeah. if you can get it into a higher impactful journal, you have a better chance of people seeing it and reading it. And that really is the goal. You want to be able to communicate that information to the world and to the audience. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's really about how one designs the experiments and what has to go into that to be able to get into a paper like a science paper. And it's, it's hard. You need a lot of data, probably several years worth of data as opposed to maybe um, a journal with a lower impact might need a little bit less. But that's not always the case. So it very much depends on the project. Very interesting. How would you balance between like doing what you would love to do versus, uh, uh, versus like doing something that is very popular and has like a, has high visibility. So there are many projects and every few years in science, there's going to be one topic that is particularly exciting to work on. Yeah. If you want to work on that topic, you need to be extremely efficient and very fast mm -hmm. because if there are lots of people working on it and if you publish the 20th paper on the topic, no one really cares because That's probably true. someone's already done it. I think it's better to solve problems that you think are important. Mm -hmm. And if they happen to be what everybody's excited about, great. And if not, that's okay too, because you're going to do good work. That goes out into literature and that will help science and engineering move forward. Mm -hmm. So I think both avenues of, go of work, both avenues of working on very topical science, as well as kind of just science that you find interesting, both paths are equally viable. Okay. You just need to think about what needs to be done and the time scales that have to be done on it. Well, obviously you are very well established uh, BMU faculty. So what's next for you and your lab? And then uh, what's your goal in the next uh, five to 10 years? So in the next five to 10 years, I would be incredibly excited and happy if we're able to get a couple more technologies to the marketplace and to people and to help them. Um, in the past, we've been fortunate to create 
new technologies and move them forward and they become products to help people in the clinic. If we could do that again, that would be great. As far as particular projects, I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we start a project, a new one every year, so it could be five years from now, it's something totally different than what <laughs> I'm doing now. Yeah. But one project in the lab that I very much um, enjoy is a project on fibrosis and fibrotic joints. And I'd very much like to learn more about the diseases around fibrotic joints and how we can best treat them. So for me, I think that's one of the areas that I'd like to focus in. Mm, that's awesome. Okay. What does the general process look like to take an innovation from bench top to bedside? <laughs> A lot of work. <laughs> <laughs>